So in this kind of brief tutorial, we're going to take a look at trying to unify or consolidate a lot of our assets because even though, you know, all these materials we've created are pretty awesome in their own right, we want to make sure that uh, they're a little bit more unified so that they look like they really uh, fit the asset and they fit within our real world. And one way that we can do that is by adding a little bit of uh, grunge, grime, or dirt to our asset. You know, give it that believability that there's some minor imperfections, it's a little bit grimy. And playing around with our roughness map uh, for our entire asset is just going to help us believe that uh, these surfaces have been in the same environments and have gotten kind of that same uh, exposure to the elements. So the way that we are going to do that is I'm going to start by creating a dirt mask that we're going to be able to use to blend with um, the other output maps that we want to affect, such as our uh, base color, perhaps our normal, and uh, our roughness. So I'm going to come down into here, and I'm going to start by searching dirt. And you can see that we're going to get a bunch of these uh, textures up here, but we're also going to get these, uh, these little uh, like preview spheres. And what these are are actually generators that are going to allow us to uh, plug in some of our mesh maps and use those mesh maps to drive uh, some information that we can use to make a mask. And so if I click under, you can see that this guy is actually going to look a lot like our nodes or our materials over here. And it's going to kind of work uh, the same way, except we're using these maps to only drive a mask output. So you can see we have ambient occlusion, curvature, position, world space, and another mask, which is optional if we want to mask off uh, different areas of our mesh. And so I'm going to go ahead and provide it our ambient occlusion and our curvature. You can also provide it position and world space, which we have right up here in our resources, uh, but we're not going to be using the feature that requires these two maps. So I'm going to come down and grab our ambient occlusion output here. And I'm going to use our normal map from our material here to create our curvature just on the fly. So now if we go back and update any of these materials beforehand, it's going to be able to update our uh, dirt mask up here as well. And that's one of the benefits of using um, a procedural curvature rather than the curvature that we've baked out because it's a static texture and it's only going to provide us what we've been able to bake from our high poly. So if I come in here and double click on this guy, you can see that we've just created a very grungy, dirty mask um, that's going to take our baked maps into consideration, as well as any of the materials that we've created after our, our high poly bakes. And you can see right here, right? It's taking into consideration um, some of the text that we've created for our various assets. And we can also see up here too, uh, very, very uh, small. Actually, that's a little bit too noisy. But uh, if we come down here, you can faintly see that we get uh, some information of dirt in our walkie uh, text there. So I'm going to start by just adding a blend to our uh, albedo here. And I want to go and now create the procedural uh, color for our dirt. And to start that off, I'm going to just type in noise. And I want to use a white noise. And you can see a white noise is a very, very well noisy uh, image because it's just individual pixels uh, with different random grayscale values. And I'm going to plug that guy in and just add a gradient map. And the reason that I want to use this noise is rather than using uh, kind of like a uniform color where it's only just one specific color. I want to get a bunch of different values for our dirt because realistically dirt isn't one solid color. Now at a glance, right, from far away, it's going to be, you know, one kind of uniform uh, deep brown kind of color. But if you look close at what the uh, dirt is actually comprised of, you're going to get a bunch of different values for it. So I kind of want to replicate that in our uh, texture here. So in our gradient map, I'm going to just go to our gradient editor. I'm going to select one of the values and maybe give this guy 
just kind of like a brown color. Give this guy another, you know, dark brown color here. Maybe take another one. Give it a different kind of brown color here. Maybe play around with the hue a little bit as well, just to get some uh, variation in this dirt color. And we can also play around right with uh, the position of that, make it a little bit darker. And you can really knock your socks off with uh, how in depth you want to get with that. But I just want to make sure that I'm getting a bunch of different uh, small color values here just to add a little bit more intrigue. So now I can go ahead and use my dirt mask to just mask that guy off. And you can see now it's going to pretty much just take those values and start blending them around uh, our asset here. And you can see we're going to get some of those color values. If we take a look in here, right, right down in our walkie, it's a little bit difficult to see. We're going to, you know, draw on our ambient occlusion mesh map and our curvature as well, just to really give our uh, mask here some information to intelligently place uh, and mask off these various areas. And so the fun doesn't, you know, stop there. Uh, we can go into this dirt mask here and we can play around with a bunch of different parameters, right? We can come out. Uh, here, we can play around with the dirt level, right? We can make it more contrasted, uh, less contrasted. We can play around with just general grunge amount. So we can bring the dirt level down as a whole, but then play around with the amount of grunge. We can also play around with our edges as well. If we come and take a look, uh, maybe it kind of right in here, right? Um, if we lessen the mask, we're going to get more dirt showing up. It's a little bit difficult to see there. If I just add some more dirt, it might be a little bit easier. But if we start masking off edges, you can see that our curvature map um, is going to basically just remove some dirt from the edges. And so I'm going to try and remove uh, the dirt just from my edges a little bit more. Just because normally dirt doesn't really uh, rest on ledges because those are the areas that are most exposed and uh, dirt can get knocked off pretty easily. So I think this guy's still a little bit too dirty. I'm going to bring that down. Maybe bring the dirt level up actually. Bring the grunge amount down just a little bit. Add a little bit more contrast to it. So that's looking pretty cool, right? Just a little bit of uh, grunge to add to our material there. So already it's starting to look a little bit more uh, unified and cohesive of a material because we're getting this environmental effect that's impacting our material here and giving this kind of expression to our material that like, hey, this does actually exist uh, in our world, right? So now that I've got this set up for my base color here, I want to go ahead and I want to set this up for my roughness because I want my dirt obviously to be uh, not you know so spick and span like it's like sopping wet or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to plug this guy in here, right? Because it's a grayscale node. I'll plug that in there. And you can see now that we're going to get a bunch of different uh, really fine information for our roughness here. And if I plug in our mask, you can see that we're going to get a little bit of discrepancy in the roughness of our dirt here. And so I don't really want our dirt uh, to be like black in some areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to our blending mode and I'm going to type in or hit screen, right? So screen is going to remove some of our darker values because what our dark values uh, mean, right, in our roughness map is that those are very glossy. I only want my dirt to kind of be rough, not super glossy. So if I can get rid of those dark values and only keep uh, the light values, but obviously, you know, varying degrees of my light values, I'm going to try and use that as best I can. So that's going to give us this nice kind of inconsistent uh, roughness in our dirt. And that's looking pretty cool already. So in this tutorial, we took a look at just trying to unify our asset here by trying to consolidate uh, some of the exposure that these materials have to our environment 
and just adding a little bit more personality to the asset as a whole. In the next tutorial, we're gonna take a look at creating a few extra kind of wacky and zany textures to add a little bit more personality to our megaphone asset and give you a better understanding of ways that we can procedurally generate textures and swap between these textures to kind of give this whole asset a, a reskinning and a, a new persona to take on.